Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my wall of Bosch. Over the years, I've just kind of accumulated various tools here and there, and I just got a new one. This is really fun. This is the Bosch Chameleon. It is just your typical 12 volt driver, but it has an interesting feature. The ends come off and you can actually swap them out for all sorts of various things. So let's say we want to put this little offset on, just kind of snaps on. And now we have a little offset driver. It's pretty cool and it has four different little tool heads. The problem is they just kind of don't go anywhere. It has kind of a soft little case for it, but these little things have just been kind of everywhere around my shop and obviously I don't want to lose them. So it's time to figure out a way to get them onto the pegboard with everything else. So I'm going to use 3D printing and we're going to figure out a way to get all of these up on the pegboard. So whenever I have a project like this, the first thing I do is see if anyone else has had this problem and if anyone else has already solved it. So I go to Thingiverse and Principles, click around and look for any kind of solution. And doing a little bit of digging, it looks like they're not really calling it the chameleon, but this the flexi-click system. I guess that's the uh, mechanism that it's using to connect all the various little modules on there. So looking at FlexiClick, I did end up finding one that looked really nice. There isn't anything exactly what I'm looking for, but we at least have a starting point. So let's go ahead and print this out and see if it works. So while that's printing, let's take a closer look at what we're trying to do. Here is what the end of the driver looks like. And then we have all these various attachments. So these just kind of go on the outside and just click in place, simple as that. If we want to throw on, let's say the right angle adapter, same exact thing, we just kind of, kind of rotate it, click it in place. And then from here, what's kind of neat is you can even stack these. So if we have a drill chuck, This comes in oddly useful from time to time. Um, I did a kitchen install and it was really nice having the ability to kind of snake around inside the cabinets. So that's what we're dealing with. And through the power of video editing, there is our new 3D printed part. I printed it out of clear because that was what was on the printer, not to make it difficult to see on camera, but let's go ahead and test this out. Yeah. It actually clicks in perfect. It feels pretty much exactly like the tool itself. So that is going to work. The problem is, is this doesn't really have the whole pattern that's gonna work with the pegboard. The geometry just isn't right. So go, let's go look at the pegboard and see just how big this whole thing needs to be. So this is the space that I have for all of this. I'm thinking the driver will kind of go down here. I'll get one of these same holders, put that over here. That'll be perfectly fine. So it leaves this tiny little sliver of space up there. And looking at it, it looks like one, two, three holes. So each one of these holes is a one inch spacing. So that would be a two inch gap. So one, two, three. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, seven. So we're gonna have seven holes, so seven inches by two inch. That's gonna be about the size that we have to fit these in. Hopefully it won't be too close, but we also don't want this thing to be way too long. So let's go by a seven by two inch grid and see if that works. Okay, so this is one of the rare times I'm going to be doing a SOLIDWORKS tutorial. I'm probably not going to make a habit of it because everyone's going to laugh at my SOLIDWORKS skills, but here we go. Um, we're going to open up that STL that we had previously. SOLIDWORKS is not really great, at least 2018, is not really great at handling STLs because they're not parametric. They're just, you know, this kind of polygon mesh and it, it works weird. We're going to work around it. We could do like a feature recognition and try and convert this into a parametric model, but I'm not going to bother with it. If we look, the front plane is aligned with the back of it, so that gives us what we need. So let's see, let's just go ahead and center on this. We're going to lay this out and ultimately try and figure out 
kind of what size this flange actually needs to be, where our um, locating pins are going to need to be, where the pegboard is, and um, just basically create a linear pattern from there. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this back plane. We're going to go extruded boss, and first thing we need to do is find the center of it because that is not centered. So we're going to do a center line right there. That looks good. And another center line right there. And I think this should look good. Let's just give it a quick test. Yeah, that looks good. So that is the center of one of these. We're going to do a linear pattern one way or the other. So this is not really going to be the center, but don't worry about it too much. Next thing we're going to do is create a, um, another rectangle. This is going to be our grid. Uh, we found out earlier that this is going to be... We want this for construction. We found out that the grid is going to be 7 inch by 2 inch. That's at least the whole grid, right? So it makes sense in a second. So that's going to be our whole grid, and then you know our rivets will go along there. So what we need to do is, I'm going to do it like this. This is a weird way of doing it, but I'm going to create three boxes that are going to basically represent these three. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to make all of these equal. Okay, so this, this, and this are going to be equal. We're going to kind of just move that out of the way for right now. And then our pop rivets have a head that's about 16 millimeters, so we need to be able to clear that. So we'll make one of these in the corner, 16 millimeters. So that's going to be the rivet head. So then I'm going to do four construction. And now it's as simple as taking this tangent and this to this tangent. And then we should be good. The thing that I did screw up on is these all need to be for construction except for the middle. But there we go. So now we can select this, 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 make those not for construction, and now we can extrude. This is going to be the size of each one of our blocks. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. And I think this is three millimeters. Yeah, that's three millimeters. Let's go ahead and do a direction two, since we need this to be actually five. So three millimeters to match up to there, and another two millimeters, so this will give us a five millimeter, which is what we want for the rivet. So hit OK, and then now we have a nice, I guess, parametric base that we can work off of, and now it's a simple matter of a linear pattern. Choose a direction, we're gonna go this way, or sure, that way, and then we're gonna do bodies, and we're just gonna select this whole body, and I need to figure out the spacing. I kind of forgot about that. So let's do evaluate measure. This is not going to be an even, nice, clean number. 64.6. There we go. So let's do another linear. Linear. And 64.6. We're going to select bodies. There. It's probably a better way to do this, but this works for me. Fortunately, because it's an STL, there's a little bit of an overlap because I think it's not like perfectly flat, if that makes sense. But now we have our triple, and now we just need to add the mounting holes to it. So I'm going to select the front plane again, because once again, I'm not sure if this is all perfectly flat. So we'll just select the front plane. We'll do an extruded cut and we're going to add our little mounting holes. But first, we need to make sure that we're in the middle, so we're gonna do another center line here. We could use a previous sketch too, but I'm just gonna do it like this. Actually, that's upside down. So now we have our center, so we're gonna redraw this grid. Once again, you could just use the other one. So seven inch. By two inch, we're gonna make sure this looks good. And cool, so that's where all of this will be. Need to make sure that this is all construction. And now, 
we can add our cutouts and this at 16 millimeters should fit nice so these are going to be quarter inch holes let me double check that real quick yeah quarter inch And then we're just going to place a few more of these along the outside. Yeah, sure. And we're going to need to make a couple more and they're not going to be on this exact grid. So I'm going to do like one there, one there. So we're going to be rotating these. So we might as well make them all pretty sturdy. And then I'm just going to select all of these and make them equal equal and then we need to make sure that these are vertical hopefully it's vertical yep and then these two vertical and then these will be two inches away since it's got to be on grid So now I'm going to make sure that all of these have good clearance. I think we should be okay. Yeah, that's going to be totally fine because that's the 16 millimeters. So yeah, we're going to be totally good. So let's go ahead and cut this. And because we're coming at it from the back side, we need to flip that through all. There we go. Oh yeah, that's right, we extruded weird, so we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do both directions. Just do through all in both directions. Cool, looks good. And I think the only thing left to do is add a radius. It's gonna be an eight millimeter, since we wanna match that perfectly. So eight. And I did find something weird is this isn't on the same plane, so we got to do that one separately. But that's fine. So eight millimeters. Oops. There we go. So that's all there is to it. So let's get this into the slicer, slice it up, and hit print. Okay, so I saved this as an STL, so we're going to go ahead and add this into the slicer. Bosch triple mount. And here it is. Of course, it's gonna try and add a wipe tower. We don't need that, so we're gonna get rid of the wipe tower. And we can just, I don't know, let's move it right there. How about that? This really isn't a super critical part, so I think 0.2 structural is totally fine. Let's go with a little bit more infill. Let's, yeah, let's do 25%. And I have some black on the second extruder. So choose extruder two. And that's all there is to it. Go ahead and hit slice. It is not a logo. And hour 46. Let's go ahead and send this over. And I'll be right back when it's done printing. So here it is, fresh off the printer. Everything looks good. Let's test out the connections. Yep, they all feel good. And it looks like it's gonna be a decent size as well. And all the holes line up. Now the thing that we didn't talk about is how we're gonna attach these. I have these um, eight quarter inch holes. We haven't talked about the automotive rivets. Um, I've used these before, but let me give you a closer look on how these work. So these are automotive rivets. These are traditionally used to like hold trim pieces and stuff like that in vehicles. And when you push on this little plunger, then it just kind of splays out. And I found the perfect size to work with pegboards. This is a six millimeter diameter. And if you do a five millimeter flange like this, then this will just kind of insert into there. That goes into the pegboard. And when you press on these, See if I can show it. 
it splays out like that and that will hold really nice on the pegboard. These are very strong and with eight of these we should have no issue you know getting these on and off and it will feel like part of the pegboard so it's a nice kind of non-permanent solution to have a really strong bond and to get these out you would just kind of pry that center pin out and then you can pull this off and remove it with no damage to the actual pegboard so I had this whole video filmed, edited, and uploaded, and after using this for a few days, I realized that the spacing was a little bit too small, and it was in kind of an awkward spot. Everything was just a little bit too cluttered around here. So you can see this is the original one that I had, and the new one I printed is just ever so slightly bigger. I just added one more inch to the overall width of it, and instead of having it right here where a lot of stuff already is, I'm going to move it back over here where I have a little bit more room. These aren't going to be accessed all that often, so I think it's going to be better to have it kind of off in the corner because I use this stuff a lot. So let's go ahead and get this up on the pegboard. So full disclosure, these little push rivets aren't always the easiest things to use. The quality of them is relatively low. They're an extremely soft and kind of fragile plastic. So sometimes you might need to kind of push them in a couple times or one might snap off and you kind of remove that one and put in a new one. I haven't been able to find like high quality versions of this. I'm sure you could go to some sort of Japanese automaker and find the ones that they use for the factory, but they're probably gonna be a lot more expensive. So just kind of keep that in mind is they might be a little flimsy when you first use them, but there's you know kind of a trick to pushing them in straight and getting them to work out okay. Okay, so we've got them mounted in the new location. Now let's take our attachments. There you go. So that's much nicer. There's a little bit more room to work around. So yeah, not bad. So yeah, hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to, you know, download prints, modify them. And also these little pegboard nubs are fantastic. Um, I have a link down below on Amazon. Just go ahead and buy a bunch of these. And it allows you to do some really cool stuff on the pegboard that is really solid because a lot of pegboard stuff just really isn't good at holding super tight. But these work out fantastically. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.